The English countryside was a stark contrast to the grandeur of Byzantium, but it was a landscape that Richard, my son, had come to know well since his arrival. As he traversed the rolling hills on horseback, he could not help but reflect on the turbulent journey that had led him to this foreign land. Though the fall of Constantinople was still fresh in his mind, the opportunity to forge a new path presented itself with the invitation from Richard, Duke of York, to join his side. Upon arriving at the Yorkist camp, Richard Harrington was greeted with the respectful curiosity that his lineage and reputation warranted. The Duke of York, a tall and imposing figure, greeted him warmly, eager to welcome the Byzantine prince into his ranks. As they exchanged pleasantries, it was clear that a mutual respect had already begun to form between the two Richards. Over the following days, Richard Harrington became well acquainted with the other lords and knights who had sworn allegiance to the House of York. Among them were Salisbury, Warwick, and other influential figures of the time, all of whom played vital roles in the planning of the upcoming battle against the Lancastrian forces. As they gathered around a large wooden table laden with maps and strategic diagrams, my son shared his experience fighting the Ottomans and his insights on tactics and strategy. His expertise was met with keen interest by the Yorkist lords, who saw exciting potential in incorporating the young prince's knowledge into their plans. The Battle of St Albans, the first significant engagement of the War of the Roses, loomed ever closer, and the tension in the Yorkist camp grew palpable. Richard, Duke of York, had laid out his strategy, which involved a coordinated assault on the Lancastrian forces, making use of the element of surprise and their superior knowledge of the terrain. At the Duke's request, my son, ever the observant tactician, suggested some alterations to the plan, drawing on his Byzantine military background to ensure a swift and decisive victory. As the fateful day approached, the bastard son of Emperor Constantine the Elk donned his armour, a blend of English and Byzantine styles that reflected his dual heritage. Standing side by side with Richard, Duke of York, he prepared to take part in the battle that would shape the course of English history. With the sun rising on the horizon, the Yorkist forces advanced, their banners billowing in the wind. As they moved forward, the wisdom and tactics shared by the lad would be put to the test. The outcome of the Battle of St Albans hung in the balance, but the bonds formed between the Byzantine prince and the House of York would endure, irrevocably changing the course of both their lives and the future of England. I sat by the fire in the Yorkist retreat camp south of Leicester, my eyes filled with a mixture of pride and concern. My thoughts were consumed by my son Richard, who was out on the battlefield, fighting for the House of York in the Battle of St Albans. Our tent was filled with tension as everyone awaited news from the front. When a young squire finally arrived bearing tidings of the battle's outcome, my heart swelled with a mix of relief and joy. I listened intently as the squire recounted the details of the skirmish and my son's heroic exploits. Richard Harrington had proven himself not only as a formidable warrior, but also as a loyal and dedicated ally to Richard, Duke of York. Throughout the tale, Virginia and my little James listened in rapt attention, their eyes wide with wonder at the heroic feats of their husband and father. The squire painted a vivid picture of the battle, describing how my boy had led a daring charge, breaking through the Lancastrian barricades and cutting a path straight to King Henry VI. With his skills honed on the battlefields of Byzantium, Richard tore through the king's bodyguards and single-handedly captured the monarch, much to the admiration of the Duke of York and his fellow soldiers. We then rode to the battlefield to meet Richard and the victorious Yorkist lords, along with their respective families. It was there that I saw for myself the King of England, chained and paraded before the men as a trophy. This did not last long, though, for the Duke of York insisted the King be treated with respect. We congratulated my son for his glorious effort, and the Duke told me, God is good he gave you a capable son, one who will surely be a blessing to our cause. Upon seizing power through Parliament in London, the Duke of York appointed Richard as the Earl of Devon, making him the de facto overlord of Exeter and Plymouth, following the fall in grace of the Courtenay family, supporters of the Lancastrian side. He used his influence to strengthen the hold of our Lord Duke of York in the south of England, earning the nickname the Byzantium Prince. 